Mr. Speaker, let me take this opportunity to discuss the issue of our return to the IMO. Yes, I know this government assured the nation of a Ghana beyond aid and our plans and programs for economic transformation and our plans and programs for economic transformation have been designed to achieve just that. And indeed, I did say that Ghana would not embark on an IMF program. We did not just say it, we also took measures towards the attainment of that objective, including the passage of the Fiscal Responsibility Act and instituting a number of irreversibility measures, and also launching the Ghana Cares Obatampa program for economic revitalization and transformation. Unfortunately, unprecedented global developments, Mr. Speaker, over the past two years, especially in these last six months, have really and truly disrupted our efforts. Governments across the world have had to change course to tackle the current crisis. Governments that less than a year ago were busily talking about energy transition and green and cleaner fuels have gone back to firing their coal plants. Governments that are known for low taxes are now raising taxes to tackle growing deficits. These are not ordinary times, not for Ghana, not for Africa, and certainly not for the whole world. Right, Honorable Speaker, let us all acknowledge that the situation we are experiencing now is different. The global context we find ourselves in is the first of its magnitude in the Fourth Republic and even before that. It is therefore disappointing when people want to pretend that these developments are purely domestic. It is tried knowledge, Mr. Speaker, that global developments, including the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine invasion, have really undermined and disrupted most economies. Governments across the globe are facing strikes and demonstrations as workers see their standards of living plummeting. As workers see their standards of living plummeting with prices of goods and services jumping to heights not seen in over two generations. An International Monetary Fund staff team visited Accra from July 6 to 13, 2022 to assess the current economic situation and discuss the broad lines of our government's enhanced domestic program that could be supported by the fund. At the conclusion of the mission, Mr. Speaker, the statement by the team lead correctly captured where we are and why we are where we are. He said, Ghana is facing, and I quote, Ghana is facing a challenging economic and social situation amid an increasingly difficult global environment. The fiscal and debt situation has severely worsened following the COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, investors' concerns have triggered credit rating downgrades, capital outflows, loss of external market assets, and rising domestic borrowing costs. In addition, the global economic shock caused by the war in Ukraine is hitting Ghana at a time when the country is still recovering. At a time when the country is still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic shock and with limited room for maneuver. These adverse developments have contributed to slow economic growth accumulation of unpaid bills, a large exchange rate depreciation, and a surge in inflation. Unquote, Mr. Speaker, from the fund. Mr. Speaker, let me be quick to add that we are not wavering at all in our resolve to turn this country around. Ours is a history, is of a history of turning things around when the country is in crisis.